Sometimes you might have an animal that finds it very difficult to offer you behavior. Um, quite often, these are animals that actually have a bad uh, past. So they might have been rescued or they come from um, some place where they had they were deprived from a lot of different influences and they haven't had a very good socialization. It can also be that you are training an animal that has already had experience with, um, let's say, more traditional ways of training. So it has been uh, trained with a lot of force, a lot of pressure, a lot of manipulation. Quite often these animals are very helpless and they already are in a state where they just think that best is not to do anything because at least then they can't do anything wrong. So these animals really need some help from you to get started because if you would just ask them to be active that might already be too hard and if you yourself might not have yet a lot of detail, detailed experience maybe it's also hard to, to really select for those minuscule little starting behaviors. So what I tend to do with animals that come with those uh, past learning experiences, I offer them a lot of interactive food toys. I actually fill them right up to the top. So whenever it almost just looks at it or even just slightly touches it, the first treat drop out. Um, I start with very easy things and then use more and more difficult interactive toys so that the animal actually learns directly that his actions have an effect. Because that usually is the biggest problem when having an insecure dog or a helpless animal. They have already made the experience that whatever they do, it doesn't really change the outcome. They don't really are able to influence their environment. So they really need to learn that they do something, something positive happens for them. So whenever they even just accidentally touch a food toy, treats drop out. So that can really help to get them started to, to develop activity at their own pace. And you can stay close, to, you can watch, but best is not to actually interfere unless you see that the animal interacted with the toy and no food dropped out so then you can actually just toss a treat close by so that the animal re again gets the connection I initiated something I was active something positive happened also what can help is to play more and more difficult hide and seek uh, games so you just let the, the animal watch and very easily hide a treat and then let it find it and then gradually increase the difficulty until it actually has to wait outside the room and then come back in and find its treat, for example. And the same can obviously also be done with toys if the animal might be more interested in interacting with toys than with food. But these are some easy ways of getting the animal started, um, get some first activity and get the animal understanding that being active is something good and something we really want to see. Once we have that, it's important that we make sure that we enable stress-free learning. That means you should find a learning environment without distractions. So it should be a place where your animal is very comfortable, feels safe, doesn't feel the need of having to check all the time what's going on. It should also be an environment where you can be relaxed, where you're not under pressure. Um, so that's very important to get started. Then it's very important that your animal is healthy and all his basic needs are fulfilled. So I'm not, uh, I don't advise that you only train with a very hungry animal or use even worse, use food deprivation or deprivation of uh, social contact just to get your animal motivated to work with you. Um, but you should make sure that all your animal actually needs to be healthy and feel comfortable 
is already fulfilled because then it's easiest for it to concentrate on the training sessions. It's sure it's for sure if you know that once your animal has been fed, it isn't willing to work for food. It's no problem to plan your training session before your feeding time. But what is not OK is that you, for example, when the animal didn't want to work with you, then doesn't don't feed it afterwards and just um, deprive it from food for a certain time. Always increase distractions very slowly. So train distraction free or almost distraction free. And only once a task is learned to a certain extent, start adding more and more distractions. Have a good plan. Uh, that helps. That will help a lot. Um, and make sure you have small and for your animal achievable learning steps in mind before you go into your training sessions. Also, whenever you see long phases where your animal doesn't offer any behavior, um, this should be a warning signal for you. So whenever the animal is so-called thinking and th these thinking pauses go on for 10, 15 or even longer periods, seconds or even more, then that's not a good sign. So you should always have an animal that is sure what it's supposed to do. So you should see the next action quite shortly after you delivered your last reward. And for me, very important, there shouldn't be any expressions of frustration, visible or audible. So if your animal is always um, barking at you when you're shaping or when you're training, or it's always whining, um, it's scratching itself a lot, things like this can mean that there is quite a bit of frustration involved. And then I would make a break, take a break um, and try to evaluate what is going wrong, where I could help my animal to feel more confident and to succeed more often so that the frustration actually uh, goes down.